Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, on a personal note, it's uh, lovely to be back and to see uh, to see the full base Majish. Um, on a more uh, general note, I just want to apologise that uh, invariably the Elul's man is always a little bit sporadic, um, both because of Hakadosh Baruch Hu's schedule and all the wonderful Yom Tov that gives us, and also because of my Kaviyach my schedule, and uh, it just always ends up uh, between the summer holidays. So I just apologise that Sunday didn't work out. This Sunday also, uh, we have a phenomenal Scotland residence over Shabbos, someone called Rabbi Sprung, who is a, uh, an expert on medical halacha and various other things. And uh, Sunday, there'll be a learning session as part of that program. So depending on the timing, uh, I may not be able to kashir either, but I, I do apologize for that. And then Tuesday, Rosh Hashanah, so it'll be a little bit interrupted. But uh, the Chavra, please keep going. And uh, um, Hashem, once we get to the more settled time, we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, the room is fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you've got the room. Yeah, the the session will, the other session will be upstairs in the middle of the room. Okay, I, I want to just try today to um, do a quick chazara on what we covered last uh, zman before uh, what was it before uh, um, the summer break, and I sat in need of the chazara, so I just want to whiz through what we covered from the Mishnah and then and then go forward. So I'm afraid um, just to take us back to the Mishnah at the bottom of Kuf Chafei Dalav, which is Evan Shabakuria. Um, and we, we, without going into all the nitty gritty, we pointed out that Rashi, um, so the, the Mishnah says that uh, a kuroya is a, this sort of a gourd which um, is used as a bucket and it only uh, it has a stone in it to weigh it down so that it can dip below the, not fl- float on the water but go below. And um, if the stone is um, uh, positioned in such a way that it doesn't fall out, then the stone is part of the function of the bucket. If the stone is not positioned in that way, then uh, the stone is not part of the bucket, and therefore it's mukta. The question is, what's the it's mukta? Is it that the uh, that the stone is mukta, or is it even that the kuria is mukta? The stone is certainly mukta if it's not part of the bucket, but does the stone also become mukta because it's a bosis? And Rashi says the stone also becomes mukta because it's a bosis. And the Rishash asks, this doesn't fit the normal klali bosis. The whole logic of bosis is that the under tray is it's somewhat tothal to the over object which it's serving. Um, here, the stone is serving the bucket. The whole point of the Evan is to help the bucket sink. The bucket is not storing the stone, and therefore, based on the Gemara earlier, which we're not going to go into again, um, it, it doesn't appear to fit the normal logic of bosses. The logic of bosses, we'll look more in detail at what exactly bosses is, but bosses is clearly because in some way or other, the under thing is is somewhat serving the over thing. And you could have had a logic that is bosses nonetheless, because they're working together or the like. But Rashi earlier seems to say not. This, this is the Rashash's question, that this doesn't seem to fit the normal uh, Klolli um, bosses. And a possible distinction would be that Rashi earlier says it's not a bosses when it's... Uh, when the under, when in, in the example earlier, where the two are just working independently, but where they're all one fun- functionality, then it would be worse. But that was just sort of the opening thing that we had to look at, in which Rashi says the, the bucket, the career becomes mukta because of the Evan, midin a bosis, and that's not entirely obvious. Then we turn over to Kuf Hafei Omad Beis, and there the Gemara, um, uh, Tanan, um, Tanan Hossam, Evan Shalpi Achoves, Mata Al Sidra Behino Feres. So you, you, when you have a stone on a barrel, you can tilt the barrel and the stone falls. Now that's only where you forgot it. But if you were maniach, then it, it would be a bosses. And the chitish of this memra is that you can be, uh, is, is that it's not a bosses when you're shecheach. What does it mean it's not a bosses when, it's, uh, when, it's, uh, when you're shecheach? Now, we could have thought that meant, I'm just getting a little bit of interference, I'm just going to mute everyone online, sorry. Um, what does it mean that it's not a bosses when you are shecheach? So you could have learned that, or, or sorry, the other way around, that it is a bosses when you're maniach. Um, you could have learned that it means it's a proper, uh, 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 the, the chobis is becomes a bosses to the evan. Rashi, however, says, not like that. Rashi says, <laughs> So you see in Rashi that um, the that the the he learns the Loshanu as going on the Sefer, which is which incidentally is not quoted fully in our Gemara, but the Rasha that Mata Osal Sida the everyone would agree with, even if it becomes an off, a, a bosses, you can still tilt the barrel in order to uh, throw off the Evan. 
Okay, so just to summarize that last point that we said, the simplest reading of the Gemara would have been that if you are Maniach, the Chovis becomes Mukta Medine Basis. Rashi says not like that. Rashi says if you're Maniach, you the, the you can't uh, move the Evan. But if you are not Maniach, you can even move the Evan. But the Chovis never became uh, um, the Chovis, you can always be matter the Chovis. The Chovis doesn't become a what we would call a bosses. The Chovis doesn't become Muksa. But Ninua is always, in other words, Ninua is always Muta. Yes. It does become bosses, but tilting is not viewed as tilting. Again, we, we, we did get up to the answer to that afterwards, but the Pashtus, um, the Pashtus, the Chovis is Osa, and tilting is a tiltle of the Chovis. And therefore, if the Chovis is a bosses, it should be Asa. Rashi seems to be saying that the whole question is, am I allowed to, am I moving the Evan or not? Is, is, is this deemed uh, a moving of the Evan? So the Masha, uh, th that's one question on, on, on Rashi, it's just a Hiddish. The Masha, in addition, I don't want to go into this whole thing in detail again, but the Masha also says that this is a stira in, uh, in Rashi. Um, Rashi in uh, Kufman based on the base, uh, explains differently there in the memory of Rav Huna Amarav. So again, I, I don't want to go into the whole session of everything we said last time. All I want to say is that the Masha learns that there is a, an, that Rashi is of the opinion that our sugya holds that in all bosses, whenever you have bosses, our sugya is of the view that a bosses is muta benir, that a bosses doesn't mean you can't be menai the chavis and shake off the stone. So the halacha we paskan pashtus like the Gemara late in Kufmen base that if the chovis is a bosses to the even you cannot be menaya the even off the bosses. But our Rashi learns for whatever reason he learns that in our sugyas mavua that even though the chovis is a bosses, um, all that means is that there's an issa tiltul, but neor would be uh, muta. That's how the Masha learns the Gemara. Rabbi Kiva Eger learns that there are two types of bosses, and, and we saw uh, Rishonim that also imply like this. Rabbi Kiva Eger learns that full bosses means that the under object becomes toppled to the over object and becomes mukta in its own right, in which case Neo would not be allowed because you're moving the under object to the Chavis. However, in our sugya, we're not talking about a full bosses, we're talking about a partial bosses. What's the logic of a partial bosses? Exactly like the Rishash's question, because in our sugya, the under object is not serving the older object. The, the Chovis, for example, is not serving the Evan. Um, on the contrary, the Evan is acting as a lid for the Chovis. And since the Evan is not, the Chovis, I'm sorry, is not ser serving the Evan, the full concept of bosses doesn't apply. And therefore, the under object does not catch the Mukta status of the over object and become a bosses which is mukta. All it means is that you can't do tiltal milad sad on the evan. Why is that called bosses? The whole logic of tiltal milad sad, which means moving something indirectly, moving the chavis, is also, is is um, is considered or not considered moving the evan. Is considered that the the, the chavis is a separate object. I'm moving the non mukta item, the chavis, and I'm only indirectly moving the evan. That would be allowed. The the reason Al Gamora calls it bosses to forbid that is because in this case, since I deliberately put it there, maniach, not shachach, I can't claim that the oh, Evan is just there incidentally, and I'm moving the chavis and the Evan is a tiltal and outside. My action relates to the Evan also. So, so just to summarize, because it's really important, and I, I, I want this to be crystal clear to everyone. We came into the sugya assuming that we always need to consider two factors. I came into the sugya assuming we always need to consider two factors, disconnected issues. Number one, the concept of bosses, that the under object inherits the halachic status, catches the halachic status of the over object and becomes mukta in its own right. And that's the question, does it become a bosses or not? With maniach, it does become a bosses. With shachach, it does not become a bosses. That's the normal rules of bosses. And besides that, we have to work out another question, which is, even if the under object is not a bosses, nonetheless, can I or can I not move the under object? Because I'll be indirectly moving the older object over objects, and for that you have to work out tiltal minatad. That's got nothing to do with the sugi of bosses. That's a separate shayla, which is if I move the under object, I'm also moving the older over object. Is that a problem because I'm indirectly moving the over object or not? Two separate shaylas. One is bosses has the under object become mukta, and the second shayla is even if it hasn't become mukta, nonetheless I'm indirectly moving the over object. Is that a problem? 
Rabbi Kiveiga learns in Rashi that that's not what's going on in our, it, it, that's not Rashi's view of things. Rashi learns even this, the shaila of moving the over object indirectly has shades of bosses to it. There's the full halacha of bosses in which the identity of the under object is so submerged that it to the over object that it itself becomes mukta. That's one halachic concept. And there's another halachic concept of can I argue that I'm doing tiltul min hatsad, indirect moving of the over object of the mukta? And the answer is if shachach, yeah, the over object happens to be sitting there, it's completely incidental. So I, I can say I'm moving the under object and the over object moves, then my action's not relating to the over object in any way, tiltul min hatsad. But if I was maniach, there's a sort of semi bosses halacha here. It's true the under object doesn't become muksa in its own right, but nonetheless, my action is considered as relating to the over object. That's the concept of tiltal min ha tzad. Doesn't work. That's the mini bosses that, that applies over here. Okay, so just to summarize, because this is very important, we have basically two readings in the Gemara. The Masha, who learns that Rashi is of the view that this is a very significant machlokas amaroim, and the amaroim in our sukya, the first amara at least, uh, um, uh, Rabbi Amr of Ami Amr Rabbi Yochanan holds that Bosis doesn't disallow uh, Nior. Um, that's the Marshal's reading of the Gemara. And Rabbi Kivega's reading of the Gemara is that here we're only talking about a semi Bosis din. Why is it a semi Bosis din? Because true Bosis is when the, un, when the under object is there to hold the over object. Here it's not there to hold the over object. On the contrary, um, the over object is serving the under object, and therefore you don't get a real bosses, but you get a semi bosses in which you can't say I'm not relating at all to the over object. I'm just moving the under object, and the over object happens to move. That is that degree of of uh, of bosses. Yes, Karen. Um, let me just look at language of the Marsha in our source. Which, which phrase in the Marsha are you are you highlighting? Did I print the Marsha? I hope I did. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry, yes. Okay, you, you can actually, in the longness of what I said, I, I didn't mention this part of Mashal, the reason, what made Rashi um, read the Al Gemara that way? And his basic, the Mashal's basic answer is because Rashi didn't want there to be an extreme machlokas between the views. Um, when, whenever you have a machlokas in the Gemara, it's 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 a bit messy thinking to to um, think if Gemara is meant to be clear thinking, you want each argument in the Gemara to be one machlokas. If you have t views in which one is this end of the room and that is end that's in the room because they're actually arguing about three points, then we've missed mid possible middle positions. So that's the point that the Marsha is making. That it, 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 what, I, what I said just now is that is the the concept of the Marsha. Now we have another question. What led Rashi to read our sukkah like that? And basically the Mashal's answer is in order to minimize the machlokas between the two opinions. Otherwise you end up with a very extreme opinion. One opinion holds that Maniach is a full bosses, and the other opinion holds that Maniach is nothing. Whereas um, in the way the Mashal learns, um, Maniach is, is no one ever thought Maniach was a full bosses. All they thought was a small detail that Maniach makes a tiltal minatad. That's that's the Mashal's logic. Is everyone with me? Why we try and minimize Machlokas in the Gemara? It's 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 a known sort of rule in the Oyomi Yeshivas that that there is shown him all try and minimize Machlokas. But the logic behind it is because if you have a, it does sometimes happen, but there's something a bit messy about or, or, or Machlokas arguing over several stages because then conceptually there could be a number of middle positions. So here um, we're ending up really with a double Machlokas going on: Machlokas about Shochach and a Machlokas about Miniach. And within Miniach, you've got a very extreme view. All the way through from zero mukta to complete bosses. Whereas uh, Rashi felt, no, everyone agrees it's not complete bosses because it's not there to serve it. So the logic makes sense. It's not a complete bosses. All uh, the first opinion went, meant to say, all that uh, Rabba Amr Avami Amr Rabbi Yechon meant to say is that you can't pretend that you're, it's still, you can't argue it's still to my side, I'm not relating to Evan. Yeah, Jeffrey. Once you get into the world of Rabbi Kivega, what yes. is the Jedda? Of a mini bosses? Is it, is it just because once you take away the idea of one from the other, just two things are just connected, or one? Maniach um, would be enough to argue that you can't disregard it. Oh. If you're something there, therefore there's a commonality of function because you chose to place it there. And if I can't say this is tiltal minatat, I can't say I'm, I'm not in any way misyachis to the, the thing on top happens to be there, and I'm just dealing with the lower thing. But if you've got two things which are touching the horizontal. Would you say that's also, uh, could one be a bosses for the other in that case as well? 
Um, I, I think Rabbi Vegas still considers bosses to be a concept of one thing on top of another. Um, if if we could set up a neo scenario, we'd have to think through what that would look like, where things are side by side. Um, how do you take away this idea of one thing supporting the other? It almost opens it so wide. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one, it sort of exposes behind the other. Yeah, but what would make it move then? How would you have a knee or something leaning on something else? But then again, it's a bosses because it's leaning. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm legitimately pushing you off and saying, tell me a case. Because the whole point of moving of Neo is one thing resting on another, or if I'm missing a concept here and you're you're asking a conceptual question, is is it now the point about one thing? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, at the moment now, I, I'm not sure what the scenario would be. You'd have to would have to work it out. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, yeah, and just to finish off, I guess, the thought that um Okay, we'll 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 leave that there. Um sorry. Right. Magnet cases and so on. Okay, let, let's park because I want I want to think it through rather than make it a fool of myself. Okay. Um I, I'm just uh, I, I, I just for the purpose of Chazorah, I'll, uh, I'll mention one other point very, very briefly, and then I'll move on. I, I don't want to add on this because otherwise we won't get anything new done. Um, I, no, I'm, I'm going to leave it here. I think this is the main point that I want to bring out for the purposes of, of Chazorah. Um, those who are interested in more, you can, I, I guess you can listen to the, the recording, but, uh, but for, for now, this, this is enough. Okay, let, let's move on to um, the, the next, the continuation of Sukkot, which is, I think, where we got, got up to. Um, so we've now discussed Rav Ami Omar Rabbi Yechanan. Um, Rav Yosef Omar Rav Asi Omar Rabbi Yechanan said a different view. He said that um, the Machlokas is only with Shecheach, but in the case of Meniach, Nasis Kisoy La Chavis. So he doesn't deem Shecheach to be a reason it shouldn't be a boss. However, he says in the case of Meniach, um, oh, oh, sorry, Shekech, not a knockout reason not to be a, a bosses, but in the case of Meniach, how can it be a bosses if you're a Meniach, you've dedicated it to a functionality of being a kisoi for the Chavis, and therefore it wouldn't be Mukta at all. That, that's, uh, that's Rav Asi's concept. So just to summarize, Rav Asi says Meniach, um, it, it, it's, there's no Mukta floating around here at all, because you've given it a role, you've given it a functionality of a lid. A, a lid's not muksa. Why should a lid be muksa? There's not a stone sitting on top of the chavis. This is a lid on top of the chavis. Of course, it's not muksa, and therefore the concept of buses doesn't uh, doesn't make sense. When you have muksa sitting on top of a non muksa on a tray, but here the evan is no longer muksa because as soon as you have intentionality of maniach, you're dedicating it to be a lid. A lid is not muksa. Correct, yeah. If you stum had a stone on top of a chavis, it would be mukta and a bosses, not controversial. But here, where you're dedicating to Maniach, is dedication lit. Is Maniach enough of a dedication to stop a stone being mukta? That's the continuation of the Gemara about how much, uh, if you take a stone, which is just a stone and identical to every other stone in the field, uh, how much do you have to, What? how significant a uh, dedication to a new role do you need to give it in order to make it not mukta? So there's a tension between, fundamentally it's just a stone, a stone is a stone, a stone is mukta. It's identical to thousands of other stones in, in the field. On the other hand, I specified it for functionality, so maybe it becomes a kady. How, how do I change something from being stum a stone to being a kady? That, that's the hemshuk of the sugya. Right, that's the, the, the maths of the sugya. So in a few moments, we're going to look at that, where the Gemara um, discusses that very thing with the story of Rabbi Yochanan and seeing a pile of, uh, of, uh, of, of beams and a pile of stones and so on. That, that will be the Hemshech of the sugya. But for now, let's just pause briefly. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Asi argues that 
or Rav Yosef Amr Ravasi argues that Maniach, you've made the lid into the stone into a lid, and therefore it's not mukta. Why does Rabba Omar Rav Ami argue with that? Surely that's a good, uh, um, a good, a, a good uh, yichud, and therefore it should be a lid. So I, I don't think I printed the the Makuris on this. Um, ah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, Vinish al runs on. So in source one, I uh, that's the problem. I printed these sheets before uh, before the main run him. Um the run brings a Shavas Harashba who says that the reason uh, if you didn't see the Rashba inside, then, then do it after the share. I'll, I'll just explain the concept outside. The run brings a Shavas Harashba who says that the reason of Rabba Omar of Ami that Yichud doesn't help is because the Yichud is not Laulam. The yichud is just for Shabbos. What, what's the logic behind that? It's true that you can make an Evan into a lid, but that's only where you're saying the Evan is now going to be a lid. But I'm not saying the Evan is now going to be a lid. All I'm saying is over Shabbos, it's convenient for me to use the Evan as a lid. That doesn't make the Evan into a lid. As, as soon as Shabbos is out, I'll, I'll chuck the Evan. I'm not planning to keep it as the lid. A sort of temporary yichud is not significant enough to make something uh, cease to be mukta. And the run argues on him, and the run says that, no, even the yichud for Shabbos is enough, and the reason why here it doesn't work is because an evan isn't a normal proper lid, and that's the weakness in the yichud, that an evan is just a clumsy, unusual lid, and therefore we don't take your yichud seriously. So just to summarize, Rav Yosef Omar of Asi says that maniach, the evan, becomes a lid, and therefore it's by definition not mukta. Um, Rabba Omar Rav Ami says, no, there's a weakness in my yichud, which means it stays mukta. What's the weakness? The Rashba says because it's only for Shabbos, and the Ram says because it's a stone. A stone is not a lid. It's, it's, it's a rubbishy lid. It's, you, you, both, and therefore the result in either Svara is you may be temporarily using the stone as a lid, but you're not making the stone into a lid. That's the, the, the Svara over here. I just want to bring out that, uh, without getting too philosophical, that there's sort of beautiful sorrows floating around here. We're dealing with what we so much of the time end up dealing with in Sugyas, which is raw material and human needs and human functionality. To what degree, are, and in what way can humans carve out, or out of, the, the, the whole engagement of humans with the world, which is what Muxa is about, is carving out of physical lumps of matter um, functionality, right? A, 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 um, a table or a chair, is just a, a shaped piece of material. The shame sh chair, kisei, or shame table, shulchan, or the shame keili is, is a human created functionality in which the purpose and the utility and the function supersedes the raw material. A wooden table is just wood, but it's not mukta and it has a shame keili because we, we give it that functionality for that name. With respect to which halachas, tons of halachas. With respect to muktzah and shabbos, with respect to tum and tara, each one in its own way. I'm not saying all halachas are identical. That's what we've been learning over here. So the sugya here is arguing about a stone. What later on in the sugya, how significant uh, an actions I have to do in order to redefine the stone so we stop seeing it as just raw material and see its functionality. And here in the beginning of the sugya, the machlokes run and rashba whether there's something called yichud for shabbos. In, in which uh, it, it, the Yechot Shabbos means that as far as Shabbos is concerned, this is a KD, or no, uh, according to the Rashbos understanding, uh, Rabbi Amr Avami says that's nonsense. The Yechot for Shabbos is not called a, a Yechot. There isn't, it, it's not a Shabbos stick lid. It's a stone which I'm using as a lid, and if it doesn't get it, uh, its new functionality. That's the, the maths of this Machlokas run and Rashbos. So that's why I printed the run and Rashbos. I wanted to speak about it. It's, it's an important Marimachim. I have one question on this, which I don't know the answer to which is the Gemara compares the case of Evan Shabakuria to the din of Evan as a, as a lid in the Chavis. And the Gemara asks how the two halachas uh, fit. And uh, the Gemara answers, no, it's different because with the Evan you, you did Hadaka, and with this case you don't Hadaka, and so on. The Gemara makes a distinction. But the Gemara had a thought to prove like rubber from Evan Shabakuria, in the same way as the Evan Shabakruya is Mukta, similarly, the Evan al Piachovis should be Mukta. Now, according to the run, we, the, the Gemara is behaving in a digital manner, a black-white, on-off, yes-no manner, when in fact we live in an analog universe in which things are more gradual. 
Rabbah isn't saying a principle that Yichud doesn't work. He's saying, I think that an Evan and a Chavis is too rubbishy a, a, a lid for me to rewrite the functionality of the Evan and view it as a lid. In which case, maybe an Evan is like that, but with an Evan Shibikuruya, where it, it is a normal anchor or weight to weigh down buckets, then it would work. In fact, the, the mission, by the way, sounds like that's what they used to do in the, in the olden days. They used to use an Evan as a weight in a, in a, in a gourd in order to make it into a useful um, bucket. So how does the Gemara, well, I'm saying, how does the Gemara know to compare the two scenarios? Rabba isn't saying a, 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 a general rule that you can never make an Evan into a Kedi just through Yechud. Rabba is saying a specific rule that an Evan al I don't think is a good, a good enough lid to uh, allow a Yechud to work. And uh, and uh, that, that's uh, Rabbi Omar of Ami. And the other of us, he says, no, I do think it's, it's a good enough yichud, even though it's, it's, it's a poor quality one. But even Rabbi would agree that if you have a, a, jet, a good way of doing things, and that does work. So I don't really understand how the Gemara compares. Are you, are you with me? The, the Gemara sort of makes out that all scenarios are the same, and there's some big clunky conceptual machlokas going on over here. There is a conceptual machlokas, but a much, a much narrower one, which is an Evan, which makes a rubbish chavis, how, how to what degree... Does your choice to use it redefine its purpose? Or to what degree don't we say you redefine its purpose? I don't know how the Gemara can compare uh, Evan Shibakuria to Evan Shibakovis. They're, they're different scenarios. Yeah, does this make sense? Sorry, you don't. You... Yeah. How does that work with the said that the way to cover a barrel would be the Viston? Really... Which shows Oz to the time, are you? I thought covering a barrel with Viston is a completely legitimate uh, sort of way of doing it back in the day. And that's what just what says. Um, I don't understand why they're saying. Where, 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 sorry, just show me the words. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he says that you don't need to do a tikkun. It's not the way to make a tikkun in the Evan. He, he doesn't say whether it is or isn't um, a normal type of lid to use for Chavis. In fact, we see elsewhere that, that most of the time people, like now, these barrels have lids. They had they had a, like a wooden picture of modern day barrel. All it says is that when you use an Evan, you don't bother making a tickle on it. Yeah. Sorry, Adam. With um, the two cases with Baba, you can understand because in the case of the Dalat, yeah, um, it's been you, you're turning it into a separate cleave because you're connecting the stone. But how can you compare the stone in Baba's world? Of course, it's different, but there it's connected to the to the. The last, it's turned it into a new plea. In the other case, it's still a stone which is separate from the other item. Therefore, there's a distinction between the two. Please. So the Gemara kind of says your distinction. It says in the case of the Evan, you're just putting it there. In the Evan, sorry, on the Chobis, you're just putting that. In the Evan, on the Kuruya, you're attaching it. The, I'm asking more, more fundamental like that. What was the Havan of the Gemara ever to compare the two? With an Evan Shibakuria, it seems that's the way they always did it. Whereas with an Achovis, we know that's obviously have lids. That's, that's how barrels work. An Evan doesn't make a good lid. By the way, the other, in, in the Rashford's world, where the Chilik is whether you do it for the whole Shabbos or not, again, I have the same question. How, how do you know that uh, we're talking about a case where you weren't planning to do it for the whole Shabbos with, uh, with the Kuria? So I, don't, I, I was left a little confused in this whole, this whole run. But I, I, I think the Machogs run and Rashford is very interesting and conceptually very, very thought-provoking, I'm not exactly sure how they crunch the maths of the Gemara, uh, and when the Gemara comes out, the answer is... Yeah. Just two scenarios where you've taken a stone, you've placed it on something for a purpose. That is the comparison. That's why, absolutely why the comparison. More... Because, according to both these Roshonim, this isn't a general argument about stones giving functionality to stones. It's just, if that was, if they said this is just an argument about stone, which after all is just a stone, it's just a piece of rubble, how can you give it a functionality? And that's the machlokas, it would have been good. But they don't say that. They say it's a specific uh, uh, machlokas in this particular scenario about um, giving, uh, uh, about how well a stone, how long you're planning to use the stone for, or how good a role the stone does. If that's true, then how can you compare the two cases? Because with the query, it's a good role. And with the... Uh, um, it, true, but stones being used for Kiruya is a good functionality. It's it's a normal thing to do. Okay, I I, I want to just say one more piece and then and then I'll, I'll finish. Um, uh, you know we've we run out of time. Um, next uh, 
maybe I'll do a I'm trying to do a zoom share for when I'm away I, I'm just I don't want to miss all the recording I don't want to miss too much time I'm, I'm conscious of the short man um I would urge everyone for the next year to do Hazara if any of this was unclear because we, we've covered this this last bit was new have a look at the rush and the run if you didn't have a chance to look at it and going forward next year I'm going to focus on Tata the muscle of Ozda Latamayu that's one thing I'm going to do and the second thing I'm going to look at is um the ritva on the sugya of Su the Khoshfu. I gave the Maramakum for that. And the final thing we're going to try and look at in the Shea is really Khazara and what we looked at previously, which is what is the Isamukta? Is the Isamukta only tiltal or is it even using things? And is it sitting on things? Are you allowed to sit on Mukta on Shabbos? That will be uh, the, the next year also. It's sort of incidental in the Gemara. Really, the Gemara is bringing all of this up just to try and understand what's called Yichud to make something not Mukta. But the Gemara is assuming that you can or you cannot, you have to crunch the maths of the Gemara, sit on Mukta. And we're going to have to discuss why you can or cannot sit on muksa. Muksa surely means moving things, taking things. What's it got to do with sitting on things? So that we will look at. And halach uh, lamaisa, are you allowed to sit on muksa? Right? If you have a, uh, a tree trunk, are you allowed to sit on the tree trunk? If you have a car, you're allowed to sit on the bonnet of the car. Everyone meant, tells kids that you're allowed to touch muksa. You're not allowed to move muksa. That's 100 percent true. But are you allowed to use muksa? That's what we'll look at in the next uh, in the next day. Okay. Thank you. Mr. 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 Mr.